Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. We are going to talk about titration curves today and titration curves are awesome. So let's talk about them. In lab, you probably have done something along the lines or maybe you've done it at home, something along those lines that you have recorded the pH of a titration as it was going. I don't know that you would want to do this at home, by the way, but if you did, good for you. Um, and you would plot pH versus the amount of, I'm going to do uh, an acid titration curve here, of base added, right? So this is a volume amount, um, we'll call it B amount, and it would be in something like milliliters pH is in pH units, it's a little different. And if I was doing an acid titration curve, let's say that I was doing it of a uh, monoprotic acid, then what I know happens in the midst of a monoprotic acid is that I have kind of, I start with a pH, maybe if this is four, or three or four, or maybe two, I get something like that. Now that's not perfect but it tends to be a little bit more towards what you see in lab. Okay, so in terms of this, you have the starting pH. At the starting pH right here, this is the starting pH of the acid alone, right? So this is the pH of HA, okay? And basically what you're doing here is you're doing kind of an idea of HA being added to, um, or really, sorry, OH minus being added to HA to form um, water and A minus. So the overall reaction we're looking at here is HA, which is aqueous. A here is a filler, right? So A, you can have X. I tend to use A because that's a reminder that it is an anion. When I say monoprotic acid, what I mean is that it has one H in front, therefore the anion is a minus charge of one, right? And if I add OH minus to that, then what's gonna happen, and this is not a single headed arrow, there's a reason why this is called acid base equilibria. I apologize. Right? You're going to form H2O, which is a liquid, plus A minus, the conjugate base of the acid. Okay. So we have quite a few things that we can talk about here in terms of what's going on. We of course have the initial amount or the initial pH of just the acid. That's whatever. Uh, wherever this titration curve hits the, the y-axis, which is pH. That's going to be the initial pH of the acid. Notice that there's a flat part right here, and that flat part is kind of interesting, isn't it? So let's kind of measure that. We're going to eyeball it a little bit, but we're going to kind of say, okay, there's at least one part of the flat part. There's one part of the flat part. Let's draw uh, a line in between those two, and this is just eyeballing it, and the midpoint of that line. All right, the flat region here is what we call the buffer region. And the midpoint of the buffer region is where the concentration of HA equals the concentration of A minus, right? So this is the midpoint. Sometimes it's called the mid-equivalence point. I, I don't like that terminology, it makes me crazy. But midpoint is a pretty good moment. Okay, that's where HA equals A minus. Now, let's remember for a minute. If that's true, then when I look at the Henderson-Hasselbach, which is pH equals pKa plus the log base 10 of A minus over HA, OK? 
Okay, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is a way for us to compare the acid and its conjugate base at once. It makes our lives super duper easy, relatively speaking, compared to ice tables. Okay, so in terms of looking at this, what's true if these two numbers are the same? If those two numbers are the same, then that becomes one. The log of one is zero, which means the pH equals the pKa at this particular point. Okay, everyone kind of good with that? For those of you who don't believe me, and that if these two numbers are the same, and it's one, then take the log of one to see what that gives you. It'll give you zero, just FYI. Okay, so pH equals pKa. So right here, if I move this over to the pH line, right there, that is, that whatever that pH value is, is the pKa of this acid. That's awesome. For those of you who don't remember what pKa is, remember p is a way in math of talking about taking the negative log of whatever comes after. So the pKa equals the negative log of the Ka. Okay, pH is the negative log of the concentration of H. Awesome like that, okay. So midpoint, first place you would look, if you have a buffer region, to be able to think about where I'm getting the pKa from. Buffer region is appropriately named. Basically within this region, what you can see why it's relatively flat is if you keep on adding base, then the pH does not change very much. That's the point of a buffer. A buffer is basically the idea that if you add base, it, by Le Chatelier, it goes to the opposite side and increases that side and then it goes back to the opposite side, so on and so forth. So when you add, uh, the idea here is that when you add base, strong base or strong acid to a buffer, its pH should not change very much at all. And Henderson-Hasselbalch is the equation we use to think about buffers, okay? so that's the awesome moment. That'll be a separate video to calculate using this. Okay. Right now, we are just trying to get to the place where we can label all of these pieces. All right. Let's say I extend this kind of flat region out. That's not a perfect extension, but you get a point. And I extend this uh, flat region out for the buffer. All right. What is this top region? That makes sense. That's where I've added so much OH that basically here I'm just measuring the pH of the OH that I've added. That's why it's flat. It's the same number over and over and over again. But what about this increase, this uh, increasing slope here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this out. I'm going to extend this out. And then I'm going to draw a line between those two. Now that was a horrible line. I apologize. Should have been a much better line. <laughs> if, I, if I do this right, which I just didn't do, that was not the right moment that I wanted there. OK, if I do this right, and I'm going to redo this with pink, then it should hit about midway on this sloped area. Let's do. Something like that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. OK. So there you go. What is that point that I've just marked here? This point is called the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where something is equivalent. <laughs> the equivalence point here is where the concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of the base added. Mm. Can't measure that with the Henderson-Hasselbalch. Okay, that's um, actually an interesting point in uh, an acid titration. If you have a weak acid, the equivalence point, whatever it is on the pH here, this pH should be basic. Okay, the reason why is because if you have a weak acid and you're adding strong base, then the, when you have the um, concentrations of each of these or the moles of these equal to one another, 
then the base, because it's strong, kind of wins out in terms of pH. So you get a basic pH here. Okay. So the equivalence point, the midpoint, figuring out what that means, I think we have all of the pieces we need here. Awesome. The other thing that you can do, by the way, is in the midst of thinking about the buffer region, one more thing. So you can follow these down. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because this was kind of a small region that I did here. Can't actually use your finger to erase this. Uh, it was flat for a little bit longer, so let's extend that out just a little bit. Messes up my bid point a bit, but this is a guess, guys, so work with me here. This right here could be used as the buffer capacity. You could talk about this general volume amount is the amount of base you can add that um, does not exceed the buffer region. Right? Likewise, I can talk about what my predominant, um, what the predominant um, kind of uh, entity, perhaps I should say here, the predominant entity is <laughs> in the midst of this acid base neutralization. So what I mean, what do I mean by entities? I mean, is it the acid that we started off with? Is it its conjugate base? Is it the buffer, uh, in the buffer region, you have the acid as the predominant moment or the conjugate base is the predominant moment? Right here we know they're equal, but what does that mean? And then what do we have afterwards? So let's talk about that for a moment. In terms of this, between the beginning pH and the midpoint, so between here and here, your predominant entity is the acid. It's the acid you started off with. Okay. Between the midpoint and the equivalence point, your predominant entity is its conjugate base. Because if they were equal here, then the uh, conjugate base takes over. Okay. And then from the equivalence point on, your predominant entity is the base you added. Okay. If you have a polyprotic titration, it becomes more interesting. And maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. Until I see you again, I bid you adieu. Have a great day.